yeah, that that final mate was uh, was quite nice, but not not very non-standard. Kasparov didn't really care. Uh, uh, Jodor, I assume this is how you pronounce it, because I think Dula Sachs was pronounced Dula, right? And I assume this is a Hungarian name, but I might be wrong. What's the meaning of Svidler in Russian? It's not a Russian name. It's a um, the the origins of the name are quite. I mean, from from how it sounds phonetically, I'm sure you can probably guess it's not a Russian name. It's a has Jewish origins, and I don't know if there is an accepted translation. People say Kasparov was intimidating to other players, uh, not always knowingly, but uh, for me he was very intimidating to play against just because of sort of his physical presence and how good he was. And um, yeah, I, I don't think he sort of set out to intimidate people, but uh, I think he, he had that effect on, on people and he definitely had that effect on me. Ah, okay, so not not, not a uh, not a Hungarian name then. It doesn't mean anything specific, Mister Plink. It like it takes uh, the root of a word, which is a one of the you know four basic swear words, and then adds something to the end of it. So there is no there is no meaning as such, but it it has like it definitely sounds like a swear word, but it doesn't have any specific meaning. You don't think it was deliberate? I don't think he could turn it off boring chess. So, like, uh, it would be deliberate if it was a setting he could flick on and off. But I think this was just how he always was. I, I like, genuinely don't think he had, he had, had or has an off switch. And because of that, I wouldn't really say it was deliberate. Uh, simply for that reason. Because I don't think it was some kind of a mask he was putting on uh, specifically to play chess. I think uh, I think he was just being himself. Yeah, um, I should be kind of close to winning here because of how active my pieces are. Maybe rook f3 is the way to go because I, I want to stop my opponent from getting the move knight d7 in. If I play g5 immediately, he goes knight d7 and starts asking for peace trades, I will still be much better, but I want more. And yeah, like forcing, forcing my opponent to play rook f8 at the very least wins me the h7 pawn. Uh... He definitely was very, very fit uh, when he was younger. He's still very fit now. Thanks for the 300, Rudolf Karnap. Um, there are some videos of him uh, working out when he was in his prime, and he was a very, very impressive physical specimen. Do you like Jamiroquai? I haven't heard Jamiroquai in such a long time. I used to like them, yeah. They were never my number one band or anything, but I used to like them. Do you think, do you see streaming and online chess tuition as a viable income stream for GMs? Um, it's not easy. Uh, you know, I think there is a temptation to see, you know, how unbelievably popular Hikaru has become. And think to yourself, you know, chess is absolutely the, the, the hottest new thing on the market. I should be doing this and I will be minting it. But Hikaru has put such a tremendous amount of work into promoting his stream, into, into making his stream in, in, into what it is right now, that uh, it's, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to achieve uh, what he's achieved. And also, of course, it, it helps him a great deal that he is Hikaru. 
uh, and and as such, you know, he provides something that very very few people are qualified to provide, you know, entertainment, but also the absolute highest quality of chess. But uh, if you also include coaching in the question, uh, certainly uh, it should be possible to uh, to support yourself by doing that. Did you ever accept the draw only to realize later that your position was completely winning? I have a story about that, actually. I, today is, you know, the actual story time with Peter Svidler. It's one of the maybe most traumatic things that ever happened to me. But because it happened in a game versus Vichy, I'm maybe not, not as heartbroken as I would have been otherwise. Uh, as I think I've mentioned maybe, uh, maybe even during this stream, but definitely during the previous stream, I am yet to uh, to win a classical game against uh, against Vichy. Uh, but when I started playing against him in the mid nineties, uh, I used to get good positions very very consistently. And uh, this is curious. I think I'm supposed to play d five and go from there. White will have some compensation, but it probably isn't the end of the world. Still going to be a bit awkward, but I, yeah, I think it's the the right way to do to to, to, to play. Uh, this is kind of a long story, and once again, I think it will get split between the number of games, so I apologize. And uh, uh, that story is from the Dos Hermanas tournament in '99. '99 uh, was one, probably the the worst year I ever had competitively, or at least for quite some time. I yeah, that was not a good year for me at all, and I was kind of struggling in that tournament. And then I played Vichy with White, and there was a specific, um, a specific line of the the open Spanish that was kind of topical in those years. When this game is over, I could maybe even show you the opening. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he knew knight d7, come on. Knight g4 exists. I played knight g4 myself, uh, young. It's not a very good move, but it exists. It's not a novelty. It doesn't even lose necessarily. Uh, but it's very risky. And I think that game shows why it's very risky as well. But yeah, that's not what happened there. It wasn't It wasn't uh, Lev not knowing the right move in the position. He was trying to dodge the opening discussion of the main lines. Um... So back to the story. Um, there was this line in the open Spanish, and uh, everybody was playing it, including um, including Vichy. And then I think two people separately told me that it refu it is possible to refute it by force. Uh, one of them was I think Nigel, and yeah, that's I missed that, but I'm actually kind of happy about it because I get to develop my pieces normally, and otherwise they were kind of stuck. It's a it's a nice little combo by my opponent, and he he is correct in playing it, but. I am not at all unhappy about uh, getting my pieces out here. Anyway, uh, two people separately told me that this line loses in a in a kind of a complicated by but rather forcing tactical line uh, ends up being completely winning for white. And I thought to myself, maybe I should analyze this. And then I thought. But people seem to already know, so it's extremely unlikely that, that that you know this will ever, ever happen in a practical game for me because I was all, in '99. I was already already playing the absolute uh, you know elite circuit. I was playing the, the the strongest tournaments, and I thought, okay, the level of opposition I'm facing, there is zero chance I will ever get to to see this position on the board. So I decided there is no point for me to even like spend half an hour clicking. So I didn't. And then that decision was further reinforced because I, I got that position uh, in a game on ICC against a, a, a Polish grandmaster who I don't think plays chess anymore called Pavel Blem. I'm pretty sure he has sort of disappeared from the chess world, uh, gone on to do other things. I don't know what things. He was a, from my interactions with him on ICC, he was a very nice guy, but I don't know what he's doing right now. So he played that with black against me. Against me, I played the supposed refutation. Um, then I blundered something and lost. And we spoke a little bit after the game, and he said, "So you know about this, right?" And I said, "Yeah, as you can see, I do know about this." 
And he said, yeah, I do too. I just wanted to check how many people knew. And uh, in particular, after that conversation, I thought, okay, like there is zero chance I ever need to, to study this because, of course, nobody will ever, ever play this. And then I go to Dos Hermanos. This is like maybe a few months after those, those encounters. I go to Dos Hermanos and uh, I play Vichy with the white pieces. And of course, he goes for the entire line against me. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, what kind of an idiot doesn't actually prepare it? Uh, that is remarkably stupid. But now I'm playing this position. I know it's winning for white, but I don't know how. And uh, <laughs> and actually, yeah, I can show you. I can show you the position because it kind of sets up the story better. So can we? Uh, yeah, like also flip. I don't know where the flip is, so we'll do it from this side. Doesn't really matter. I understand this is not the format for this, but I will not take very long. So this is like the, the classical open. And then there's this old line starting with 3 cd 4 9 g5. And uh, there's a lot of theory here connected with queen takes g5, queen f3, and so on. But people were playing bishop d5 in that position. Uh, and Vichy played bishop d5. And I thought, okay, now I absolutely have to do this, but I don't know what happens afterwards, but I'm, I'm not dodging this responsibility. So I very quickly took on f7, king takes f7, you play queen f3 check, black goes king e6, queen g4 check, king e7, and here you go e5, e6. Uh, and white is actually completely winning here because there are just too many threats. The immediate threat is queen g5, and eventually you have to take on e6, and then your pieces get completely tied down with rook e1, and I'm pretty sure the, like, the modern computers probably show like the immediate plus three here. I, I don't know, I don't want to switch it on. I just wanted to show you this position. And basically we got here, both of us spent like two minutes to get here. And when I played e5, e6, it was also like speaking about achievements I, I've, I've gotten playing Vichy. Vichy sort of quietly, but quite audibly uh, said something, something swear worthy under his breath after I played e6. And he started to think. <laughs> and uh, like half the tournament at least was passing by this board and kind of grinning because really everybody knew this existed. Apart from the two people who actually were playing the game. And after this position appeared on the board, like we both had a hundred, like, I don't know, an hour and 15 minutes left at this point. And five moves later, we were both in horrible time trouble because if you, if you don't know what the machine says here, it's not that easy to work out how you're supposed to win this with white. And I was completely winning in the first time trouble, then I screwed up and it was a draw. And then Vichy screwed, screwed back up. And towards the end of the second time control, we ended up uh, with a position where I had a king, three pawns, one of them on a7. Uh, against a king, a king, knight, and one pawn, and uh, that wasn't you, you know those were really really long games. That was like a seven hour time control, and uh, at that point I got more time, so I had like thirty minutes for the remainder of the game. Really really long time controls, and I'm sitting there and calculating because. Uh, the position appears to be solvable, completely solvable. Like you, you, there is no guesswork involved anymore. There's so, so little material left that there's really absolutely nothing to guess. It's either winning for me or it's a draw. Uh, but it's, it's been such an exhausting game up to that point that like my brain isn't really firing on all cylinders by, you know, by any stretch. And I'm sitting there and I'm calculating and it seems to be a draw. And then I calculate it all over again. Uh, 
I've spoken about the Petrosian uh, case uh, kind of at length on my own stream. I, I would actually say something, but I didn't see those questions, and I'm kind of trying to tell stories here. So apologies, but I'm in the middle of something. Uh, but there's not much I can say, honestly. Like, I, I know the official line, and uh, it's a good thing that this discussion is now is uh, is now in the open. That's like, the for me, the biggest takeaway is I'm happy that this is not a, a discussion being, you know, done in in whispers. It's it's now very much out of out in the open, and we can we can talk about it because it's a lot better when it's done this way and not not in the way that it normally is done when people have suspicions and nobody says anything. Anyway, back to back to the story. So I'm sitting there and. And I'm calculating over and over again. And maybe if, if somebody can tell me in comments how to quickly set up a position, I can show you the final position of the game because it's actually a very instructive position um, after this one is finished. Uh, so I'm sitting there calculating and there is so little material on the board that it seems to me that I've completely exhausted everything you could possibly calculate uh, uh, completely exhausted everything you could possibly calculate, um, uh, and it's all a draw. Thanks. I've, I'll 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 do that. Uh, something pretentious. Uh, I appreciate the appreciate the quick uh, uh, the quick help. And the only reason, and I, I think I said I had I had thirty minutes, and I think I spent between fifteen and twenty of them. Uh, and mainly, I kept on going back and back to my calculations because I had a very, very clear idea in my mind that I will now offer Vichy a draw. This is a strange move because if I play A6, I think the knight cannot even take on C7 because it gets captured on A8, so I'll, I can do that. Uh, yeah, I do stream on Twitch on, on this account. Um, and the only reason I was, I think I calculated the lines I was trying to calculate, I don't know, 15 times over, or maybe even more than that. And the only reason I was doing that was I had this very clear idea that I will now offer a draw to Vichy, he will accept it. And then we will get out of there, we were playing in this kind of an old theater, and there's really nobody in the auditorium anymore, but uh, Ar Argentini Argentinian Grandmaster Daniel Campora was doing analysis outside. And I thought, I will get out of this room, and I will be greeted by people who will immediately tell me it's like mate in 23 in the final position. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, what's the... I assume that's the position where... Why was that deleted? That seems... I said hi to you in chat, uh, Yodor. I think. Didn't I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I don't need the. Yeah, I've. I was was not bought. Okay, fair enough. Um. Anyway. But, still, like I have this absolute horrendous feeling in the in in, in you know in, in in my stomach that I will offer a draw and it will turn out to be winning, but I can't find any win. So what what am I supposed to do? So eventually I do offer a draw, and uh, Vichy of course accepts it because his position has zero winning chances. We shake hands and we start laughing about the whole thing and discussing like the opening and everything. And then we get out of the auditorium, and uh, of course Campora literally runs up to me and says, Peter, but what have you done? The final position is made in 21. And... <laughs> That was not a very pleasant experience, let me tell you. I still kind of uh, regret it bitterly. 